story that Vance modified this, made a special skateboard and tried to ride down the I-10 Lake Charles. Yeah, we did do that. We bombed. No that. way. Yeah, I bombed. No that. way. I bombed that hill. No bro. fucking yeah. way. Yeah, that was me and Ross Van. Ross Van. Tell me that story. Oh, uh, we we went and skated it. We I was crazy as hell. I was stoned out on my gourd and went and bombed the hill. It had the, it had the grids in the thing that were like this wide. What is so, that? Were the spaces on the bridge like like the not normal cracks? So uh -huh. I had to have I used gyro wheels with an aluminum core. So you actually wheel. did make a skateboard. Yeah, I made I made the purpose. wheels. I had the the honey core wheels, the gyro wheels. So you that put was some big ass wheels on. Yeah, it. bigger wheels with a core in them, so that it wouldn't bottom out. So I had hit it, and I had them chase me down in a truck. Yeah. <laughs> I did that. How long was the board? Was uh, like the board. Uh, uh, let me think. Uh, the board. 32, I'd say probably about 47 inches. How fast did you go down that? Oh, I don't know, but I'd say in my 60s. Were you, you know? shitting? Oh, yeah. I, I got into big, I got into hills. When you were going down the Lake Charles Bridge, were there cars on it with you? Yeah, you there, it was, it was, we had to pass and do it a couple times. And first, I started off like partial down the bridge and halfway down it because I said, no, no, this is going to be too fast. And then once I got started, I slid out and I said, no, man, if I'm going to do it, I'm going from all the way. And I did it from all the way at the top of them chasing me down. And they were all... With some buddies in a truck behind you. Yeah, they were in a truck behind me and they were all flipping out that I did it. And I was shaking so bad when I got off on adrenaline, I was going like this. I'd been drinking beers and stuff to do it, you know. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I bombed it. I did it, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I was in a bad motorcycle accident, you know that, right? That's no. Right. Yeah, that was, I was in a bad motorcycle accident in 82, and uh, I was confined to a wheelchair for a while and stuff, and, and I, I pulled many stunts in the wheelchair, me and Brian and Rocky one night, I, they got me out of the hospital, I'm holding on to the back of the car on the wheelchair, and we're doing about 30 miles down the street, and I let go because I got the speed wobbles in the wheelchair and hit a curb and totaled the wheelchair with them. <laughs> and they, they got you out of the hospital? <laughs> yeah, they used to sneak me out of the hospital. Well, okay, so Cajun Skate Park, when I never I'll forget when it opened and stuff, they had all these rules and everything. And we weren't into wearing the pads and the helmets and all that, but we had to. But when we went in there, you know, it was like, it was the kids, they weren't that, they were just, you know, just barely doing the moves and everything else. And we would come there, which is this ball of energy, and we'd hit the place, and the whole place, they would move out of our way, you know, and we just took over the park. You know, it was like it was our park. Nobody else wanted to skate or nothing, they just wanted to watch us. Right, and it was like an explosion. Yeah, and I, I was thrown out there for skating off the roof there too. I used to skate off roofs onto flat things and stuff Acid like that. dropping off the Yeah, roof. exactly. And, so, and then one time we would, we would go break in there after hours and stuff and skated. I, me and Rocky would have, we, me and Rocky were into the moped area real big time too. We had the old Honda mopeds when we zipped all over town with our skateboards and go places and stuff. But well, we took our mopeds into the pool at the skate park and we're getting aerials on our mopeds and it had marks. And the owner came to us asking, hey, did you guys break into my park? I got moped wheels, got marks coming out of our pool. I started walking neighborhoods and I stole the car. Well, the car I stole was a Monster 2 Plus 2. And it would only go 60 miles an hour or 120 miles an hour. I had something to do with the gas in between. You could only go 60 and 20. 120. So, <laughs> so Rocky, we're going through the checkpoint in Texas, and Rocky's sleeping. And I'm driving, and I go through the checkpoint in Pat Blanca, Texas, and pass it up. All of a sudden, I got a state trooper behind me, one on the front of me and one on the side of me. So I tell waking up Rocky, and I go, Rocky, Rocky, I said, Hey, we're being chased, bro. We've been doing rockets going, pull over, pull over. I said, man, I ain't pulling over, so I'm going full blast. This is right after you cross the Yeah, so they're, they're hanging out the window. Point. I hit the cop car in front of me, behind me, and we go across the ditch going Interstate 10. We're going eastbound now and splitting up traffic. We're going to a ditch up against the barbed wire fence, and it's freezing cold. It's the desert, and all you can see is this moon and this big mountain. I tell Rocky, we're both meeting at the tip of the mountain or the hill. So he took off and they're shooting at us. Y'all ditched the car? Yeah, we slid up against the thing and climbed out. Rocky was trying to get his coat and he had the money and the weight on him. But anyway, 
So I wanted him with me, so he climbed over me, took off running. Well, they're shooting and stuff. And I'm they're just, shooting at y'all? Yeah, they're shooting at us with high-powered lights and stuff. And so that's how I got these scars on my arms. And so anyway, they gave, so we kept going, and I lost Rocky. And so days went by, and they caught me in Mexico. I never knew that I went across the Rio Grande, and they got me in Mexico. From, so they never caught you when you survived? No, I got away. Rocky didn't. And they caught me. I had Vans tennis shoes on. Well, they got the prints off the Vans tennis shoes and made a deal with the Texas Highway Patrol to trade us for shotgun shells and the Texas Highway Patrol to get me back across the border. So both me and Rocky's dad, my dad and Rocky's dad were there to get us in Sierra Blanca, Texas. And never will forget when I saw Rocky, they bring me in, they caught me in Mexico, brought me back across the border. When I see Rocky... How long, how long were you out in Mexico? Like one uh, two around? days. Two, two, three what were you days. doing? Running. <laughs> Running. <laughs> Running and hiding. Man. I was all torn up. Anyway, so when I see Rocky, they tell me this story when they get me. They said, yeah, we killed your buddy, Rocky. Nah, and I'm like, oh, man, Rocky's dead. I'm all upset and boo and shit. When I get to Sarah Blanc in Texas, first thing I do is see Rocky coming down these steps in this all white uniform and stuff. And I'm like, I said, Rocky, man, you're all right, you're all right. And Rocky looks at me and goes, the burritos are great here. I was like, you motherfucker, man. <laughs> Anyway, so oh, then they, wait, how did they end up getting you? Uh, how did they end up catching you in Mexico? They gave my shoe print to them and told them a white boy. To the Mexico police. Yeah, to the Mexico police, and a white boy was running through your desert somewhere. And I was in a, I got in a dump truck one day and rode in the back of a dump truck. Got into this town and guy was walking through the town and two federales and done the covers and came around and grabbed me and threw me in the back of a station wagon and held me back in the back of the station wagon and drove me for hours to a border and then traded me for the highway patrolmen's waiting in the middle of the border. Right. Highway patrols here and the federales here. And they made a trade for me from shotgun shells is what I heard. Oh, so the gringo cops gave the uh, Mexican shotgun shells, shells to get me back across the border. <laughs> <laughs> And they traded my ass. I was like a shotgun. It's like a crazy thing he's doing. Yeah. So then they took me from there. They took me from there to Sierra Blanca. And because of my past, when I've always been in and out of shit, and because of my past, and so they said we were sending him to Juvie in El Paso, Texas. They drove me to El Paso and then back to Sierra Blanca where our fathers met us and we all rode together back to the What did your dad think about all that? How were your parents? Oh, my dad, I saw him today. My dad is a. I mean, he's a warrior to put up with me, you know, but I put him through hell. <laughs> way ramp I, I learned it when I came because like I said I always visited Louisiana I'd come back and forth and I'd come back and forth and I came back and John goes man you gotta check out this ramp man and I'd see, and I thought oh it's just gonna be just another wooden ramp and I get there and this is massive steel ramp and I was just amazed and how I saw John skating when he started and then to when he was skating this now and he's doing foot plants and I mean six foot airs out and tw tw he was just going off. I couldn't believe how much they had advanced, you know. They made me look like, whoa, I was just doing front side, back side airs and tail taps and stuff like that. And now all of a sudden, these guys are just going insane. Right, to another era. Right, way past, you know. I was like, whoa. I was amazed at how much they escalated, you know.